are standing. It affects how we are seeing. So when we are standing on Christ, the Bible says Christ the solid rock I stand. When you stand on Christ, it influences how you see things. Amen. A problem cannot be solved at the same level a problem was created. In order for you to solve the problem, you will need to elevate yourself to another dimension, to another level. You will need to reposition yourself so that you are seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus and from where you are sitting, you can be able to say, open the eyes of my understanding that I might see. Amen. Nikombela ame. Hallelujah. Our problem sometimes is that we are surface Christians. We are surface thinkers. We are surface motivated. We look with our naked eyes and we think there's all to it. But then the word of God says you mustn't look on the outward. You mustn't look on the surface of things because there's a better point of view that will reveal to you things that are happening behind the scenes. Amen. When the scene is set, the scene can be reset. Come on, somebody, help me preach this way. God's point of view should be the only point of view we have. God's point of view should be the only point of view we have. But we can only have God's point of view when we are seated together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. But then when circumstances happen, they happen with a plan to dis place us or move us from the position that God has set us on. When you are displaced, it affects your point of view. Lord, open my eyes that I might see. Moses says, Lord, show me your ways. Show me your point of view. The Bible says my ways are higher than your ways. But it doesn't mean God doesn't want us to think like him. He is calling us to another, to another dimension. He is saying to us, come up here. He's saying, come up here. Because from where I'm standing, things are not the same. When you look down on your problems, it changes your point of view. He says, my ways are higher. My thoughts are higher. I'm calling you to a high place. I want to go with you to higher dimensions. Higher levels. So we can't just remain where we are seated because our only advantage is our prayer life. And when you pray, things begin to change. Amen. Say, Lord, show me your ways. Say it like a prayer. Show me your ways, oh God. Show me your ways. Show me your ways that I might walk with you. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they are in agreement? How can we walk step to by step with God unless he has shown us his ways? Show us your ways, oh God, that we might walk with you. Show us your manner of doing things so that we can do as 
as you do. So that we can speak as you speak. Show us what you mean. So that we can say what you say. Because when we speak without understanding, it affects our confidence. But then when we begin to have revelation of what God is saying, we begin to speak like he speaks. Show me your ways. Put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, show me your ways. Come on, church. Lift up that prayer. Say, show me your ways, oh God. Show me your ways that I might walk with you. Show me your ways that I might have understanding. Show me, oh Father. Open the eyes of my understanding. Misunderstanding is misleading. If you misunderstand God, you are going to be misled. But it is in Revelation where your steps are ordered by the Lord. It becomes important for you to start by crying out to God and say, Lord, show me your ways. Lord, show me your ways. Lord, show me your ways. Let's pray, church. Pray. Pray for yourself. Let's take advantage of social distancing. Just lift up a prayer and say, reveal yourself to me that I might know you and the power that rose Jesus from the dead, that I might know you, oh God. Reveal to me mysteries. Reveal to me purpose. Reveal to me vision. Reveal yourself to me, oh God, that I might know you. Because your word, oh God, says those that know their God shall do great exploits. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Show us your ways. Show us your ways. Remove blindness from my eyes, oh God. May I not misinterpret your word. Give me understanding and revelation. Show me your ways that I might walk with you. Show me, oh God. Show me, oh Father. Show me. Open open blind eyes restore vision in this house restore dreams in this house reveal reveal yourself reveal yourself in this house reveal yourself in this house we cry out Lord show us your ways show us your ways show us your ways show us your ways Your righteous highways bring us to your highways. Plant our feet on your highways, higher grounds, higher levels. Take us up to the mountain top. Put us at the cleft of your rock. Put us, oh Father, in the cleft of your rock. Revelation in this house. I rebuke any dark area. I speak illumination, revelation, understanding. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
In the name of Jesus, Father, we do not want to look at the surface of things. We do not want to look at the surface of things. Oh, Father, we are not carnal-minded. We are tired of carnality. Carnality is enmity towards you. We move carnal hearts in this house. We move the heart of, of stone. Give us, oh, Father, your heart. Your heart, your heart, your desires, your desires, your desires. Oh, we desire you. We desire you. There's nothing we can do. It is only your presence that can impact. It is only your presence that can influence. It is only your presence that can change circumstances. It's not the words we speak. It is the spirit behind the words. The spirit of life. Oh God, breathe upon your people this morning. Breathe. Breathe. Breathe new life. Breathe. 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 Go beyond the words. Go beyond the words. Penetrate our hearts. Penetrate our hearts. Penetrate our hearts. Hey, Yedesia. Unless your presence comes with us, we shall not go anywhere. Unless your glory is revealed, we cannot accomplish anything. to pray always. 
place. You must never allow the enemy to steal your prayer life. Because when you stop praying, you start dying. Men ought to pray always. At all occasions. At all times. At all situations. Men ought to pray always. We need to make it our habit to lift up habitual prayers. It doesn't matter what we are saying. What matters is that we are keeping the principle of prayer. When you stop praying as a couple, you are growing apart. When you stop praying with your family, you are losing your children. Men ought to pray always and at all times and at all given situations. Come on, somebody. We ought to pray. We ought to pray. We ought to pray. We ought to pray. It is prayer that corrects and we adjust our attitude. They, 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 they. Jacob says, I take joy. It is written in the book of Psalms. It says, I take joy in the breaking of my bones because the breaking of my bones brings me structure. You know, there are certain things that happen in your life. They hurt your pride. But understand that this is the realignment that God wants to do in your life. It is the breaking of your bones. It is the humbling of something in you. The breaking of your bones brings you structure. So we need to understand it is only in prayer where God gains access to our heart of hearts. It is only in prayer where God will begin to whisper wisdom. You ought not to run before you hear. We must be like David who inquires from the Lord. Great leaders are people who have an audience with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A mark of great leadership is one who knows how to inquire from the Lord. Because when you inquire from the Lord, he orders your steps. He becomes the light upon your path. Amen. Ah, we ought to pray. We ought to pray. If you think you are okay without prayer, you fall in that category that says the dead knows nothing except that they are dead. Amen. Amen. That scripture says when you pray, it doesn't say if you pray. It concludes that you are in agreement with the standard that God has set. The standard is men ought to pray. And then it is giving you guidance of what to do when you pray. Because it takes it for granted. When at the appointed time, you know, Habakkuk says, I shall stay my watch. He is doing a physical thing, a, a, a natural thing, honoring an appointment that is set on a chronological clock. He honors it. He puts a when. He puts a when. He says, I will stand my watch. I will keep the appointment that I have with the Lord. When you, you see the book of Habakkuk 1, you can see his complaints. You can see his quarrels with the Lord. You can see that his heart is broken. But then he concludes, where can I go except to the Lord? Where will I run? He says, this is what I will do. I will keep my appointment with the Lord. I will honor my watch. I will stand where he said he will meet with me. It says I will see what he says. Hallelujah. The pray prayer 
It's just like that curiosity or that hunger that you have to see what the Lord will say. It is important to see what the Lord will say, not to draw your own conclusions. Amen. So, Abanyabantu, they will think, hi, it is, it's more spiritual not to have an appointed time of prayer. But then things of the, when we keep a certain principle in the natural, it is, it births, you know, revival in the spiritual. Just the coming together. The Bible says, do not neglect the coming together of the saints. Because where two or three are gathered in his name, he is in the midst of them. It can look like an ordinary thing. Waking up in the morning and puffing. But then the word of God says, in doing so, God opens the heavens. And he honors the appointment. When you pray, God shows up. When you put aside time, God shows up. Amen. Men ought to pray. Look at your neighbor. Look at your wife and your husband. Look at your child and say, you ought to pray. I'm telling you, language I give it to Fanelu Tandas. Gufanele. It says men always ought to pray. There mustn't be, not, not on our watch, Bazalwan. Mina, I refuse. You know, God, God should rather mute me. If he feels my prayers are too much, I refuse. Because sometimes it might look, ooh, grace. But when we honor the appointment, he shows up. In the book of Habakkuk says, God showed up and he spoke words to him. Amen. So we need to do that when we pray. When we pray, it says when you pray. When you pray, say. Look at your neighbor and say, when you pray, say. Okay, we need to say something. Amen. When you say you pray, say. It's only in prayer that you can speak into the atmosphere. When we say, we are planting the heavens. Because words are like seeds. They birth after their own kind. When we pray, we must say. We don't only pray in action. We don't mime the prayer. We say something. We say something. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It means let them say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Let the, the blind say, I can see. I can see. When you pray, say, do not let the enemy take away your voice. Do not be afraid to say something. When you pray, say, Say what you want to see until you see what you said. When you have not seen what you said, continue to say it. Say, I can see. Say, I can hear. Say, I can walk. Say something. And it says, when you pray, go. Let's say go. It says, go in. Say, go in. Go in. Go in. So when you pray, go into your chamber. Go into where the issues are. Because the Bible says from the heart flows issues of life. You know, you feel the way you feel because of what's in your heart. So when you pray, go in. Don't just beat the air. Don't speak things outwardly. Go in. Say, go in. Say, I will go in. What is the condition of your heart today? The psalmist says, renew a clean heart within me. Purify me. And renew the right spirit within me. When you pray, go in. Do not just be making noise on the outside. 
Do not stand at the street corners. When they say stand on the street corners, they are talking about the focus on the outside. When it says go into your chamber or your closet, it is talking to your heart because your heart is enchambered by the rib cage. It is in the inside. But then the word of God says when we come into the most whole, holy place, we must come with uncovered faces. It means we must bear our heart. We come holding them like this and say, this is me. This is me. This is how I am. When you pray, go in. Don't say what you think God wants you to say. Say what is in. Go in. Go in. Go in. When you pray, go in. It is about time the church went in. Because we have surface Christians. We have shallow Christians. But the Bible says deep calleth unto deep. Deep calleth unto deep. Deep calleth unto deep. When you pray, go deep. When you pray, go in. Prayer is not about how it sounds like. It's about the condition of your heart. How it is. Amen. The book of 2 Kings 2, 6, 16 to 17. Uh, the Bible says, so he answered, do not fear. Say, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, you say he prayed, and said, say he said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. So we see him, okay, praying and saying, what he wants to see. He wanted to see eyes open. Prayer is what makes us more than them. We can't be more than them. We can't be more than them. We can't be more than them unless we pray. Prayer is the only thing that makes us more than them. Prayer is an invocation. It's to call on God to come alongside you. It's to provoke the anger of God concerning you. Oh God, Lord, I need you. Come with me. Unless you go with me, how will they know? You see, when I pray, unless God shows up, what distinguishes me? I will be like the Pharisees and the Sadducees who are just talking eloquent words. But it is his presence that distinguishes me. So what makes you more is not your talent. What makes you more is not your gift, but is the backing of heaven alongside you. It is not your mental capacity. It's not your intellectual ability. Because when God doesn't come, you what you have is zero the bible says your righteousness self-righteousness is but like a filthy rag to me i have confounded the wise and i have chosen the foolish things of the world i have ordained praise out of the mouths of little babies to silence the fool because the battle is not to the strong but it is to those who pray. It is to those who pray. Men ought to pray. Men ought to pray. Hallelujah. What makes us more in rank? It's not your ability. It's not your skill. It is what's behind the skill. What distinguished David was the presence of God because the Bible says he played the harp skillfully and the presence of God will break out. Remember 
But there's no one who can pray for the king unless they possess the skill. You see, the standard is standard. It's zinga, la pansi, and the wunke, nisa, epkonen, buga, 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 king. It's the skill. But what keeps you in the palace is the presence. Because they should be able to distinguish you. They should be able. He can play. But there's something. When he plays, amen. What distinguishes us is not the size. It's not the size. It's not how big your brain is. It's not how big your talent is. It's not how big your capital is. It's the presence of God behind what you are attempting to do. Men ought to pray. Men ought to pray. When we go to our workplaces as surgeons and doctors, we need to be distinguished. They should say there are people who can operate, but he, oh my God, can operate. It is the presence. And the presence doesn't come unless you pray. There's no faking it. You can't fake the presence. Hey, men ought to pray. And then he says, Lord, open his eyes. And the, the, the Lord opened his eyes and the young man saw. Say the young man saw. Amen. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. Because what makes us more than them is the presence. You see, the enemy, Usatan, Utablos, the devil, the devil. He wants to reduce the battle to his size. And his size is the carnal size. Usatan lempi yenyama. We are yards. Are you hearing me? So when you are foolish, you are going to engage him in the realm of the flesh. And when you engage him in the realm of the flesh, you have already lost the battle. Because what makes you more than them is not the muscle on your bicep. What makes you more than them is the, the, the wind behind your sling. You can only be a giant slayer when you are a presence invoker. You can only be a giant slayer because it's not by might, not by power, but it's by the Spirit of the Lord. What makes us more is the prayer, my baby. It's the prayer. What makes you more is the prayer. What distinguishes you, Dobby, is the prayer. It's the presence. It's not the vocal ability. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says there were chariots with a difference. Chariots of fire. Chariots of fire. Hallelujah. Chariots of fire. Lord, we call upon your fire. In our circumstances, your consuming fire, the fire of heaven, the fire of heaven, rekindle the passion in our hearts. We call upon you, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us, every step of the way, walk with us. Walk with us, walk with us. Walk with us, walk with us. We don't want to do anything unless you do it with us. 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 Hallelujah. The Bible in the book of 2 Corinthians 10, 3 says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in him in pulling down strongholds, principalities, forces of darkness, imaginations, every word that tries to exalt itself against the knowledge of the word of God. We put it to subjection by prayer. We pull down. 
We pull down principalities right now. We pull down imaginations. We pull down voices of negativity. We pull down obstacles, powers of darkness, curses. We put them under subjection, under subjection, under subjection. The heel of a woman shall crush the head of the serpent. We crush the head of the serpent. We crush the government of the enemy. We crush all ideas that come from the pit of hell. We place them under our feet. For your word says you have given us power to trample upon scorpions and serpents and they shall not harm us. Any serpent in your life this morning, we tread upon it. We crush his head. Any lie of the enemy, we crush his head. We crush his head. We resist the devil. And he flees. Let's push him. Let's push him back. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of God. In the name of Jesus, the weapons of our warfare are mighty in you, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray in the name above all names. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, for Jesus speaks a better covenant. Hear the Messiah. Hear the Messiah. Hear the Keshia. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. It says, being ready, being ready. Let's say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, say, I'm ready to punish all disobedience. I'm ready to punish anything that disobeys the command of your word. I hold the sword of the spirit. I punish any disobedience. I separate bone from marrow. Come on, church. Men ought to pray. Men ought to pray. We punish any disobedience. We punish any disobedience in our hearts. We shall not be wayward. We shall not resist God in the name of Jesus. I have five minutes. Galatians 2.20, I can't finish this sermon. It says, I have been crucified with Jesus. Yes, I live, but it is no longer me. The life I live now, I live in the spirit. By faith, by faith, by faith. The life I live now, I live by faith. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because those that come to him must believe that he exists and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The life we live now, we live by faith. The life we live in the flesh, the life we live in the flesh, Lempilo esi pila enyamen, si pila ngogu kolwa, asi pili ipilo yesi moya enyamen, si pila enyamen ngogu kolwa. I want to try and break it down for you. It means God has given us the power to try to say every, every piece of land that the soles of your feet shall tread upon I have given it to you it is a physical walk of treading upon the land but behind your physical action you are propelled by faith Satan does a pimbo yetu God was si pagavisa imi pimbo yetu Ngoba si kukuze luang, ngoku kolwa, uguze si kulume la mazwi, esi wa kulumayo, ngoba nga gwenyama, anyege si kone uguwasho la mazwi. We cannot claim, we cannot name these things, literally by only our words. It is faith that propels us. 
Nkweli amen. Your body must move. You must occupy until he comes. You must do business until he comes. That's the physical engagement. But if you are just engaged in the physical engagement, you have reduced the battle to carnality. The carnal mind is enmity towards God. But then the mind of the spirit is the one that understands that by faith the worlds were created so that what was unseen was birthed into the seen. So we do this we worship because we know behind our voice there's the presence of the living God. So do not allow the devil to look down on what you are doing physically. The Bible says they walked around the walls of Jericho, literally. They didn't do it figuratively. They walked around the walls of Jericho silently. They walked around the walls one time. Walked around the walls two times. And in their hearts, they knew something was happening. The work they were doing in the flesh was propelled by what they were believing in the spirit. They were doing the work by faith. Unless you walk by faith, your faith is in, your work is in vain. They walked around the walls three times. They walked around the walls four times. They walked around the walls, come on somebody, five times. Hallelujah. Every action you are doing, it might seem like it has no impact, but cracks are beginning to form in the kingdom of darkness. Every prayer you raise is like an arrow that shoots down that pokes holes to the scheme of the devil. They walked around five times, six times. They walked around a seventh time. And the word of God says they lifted up a shout. They lifted up a praise and an earthquake, a trampling, and every wall of containment, every wall of restriction, every wall of limitation, every wall that denies you access this morning I speak against it in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus walls of exclusion walls of exclusion I pray against them in the name of Jesus Jericho walls are crumbling down in the name of Jesus obstacles are removed in the name Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we break out of the box, we kick the door open, in the name of Jesus, we shall have what God says we will have, we are who God says we are, we are who God says we are, we silence every voice of negativity, we pull down imaginations, in the name of Jesus, in the name Jesus, I rebuke the enemy concerning you. I rebuke the enemy concerning you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every trap of the devil, every snare is broken. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord upon your life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I want people who are saying, Lord, I'm coming back to the heart of worship to lift up their hands. I'm bringing back my prayer to you. I commit, oh Father, to partner with you. Use me, oh God, for what you want to do. In the name of Jesus, oh Father, look at us. See the showing of our hands. We want more of you. We desire you. We want to be like you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen.